Hello and welcome to the fourth of the lectures about the kinematics of plate tectonics for the geodynamics course. What we'll be talking about in this lecture is uh, plate motions on a flat earth and so we'll be making the approximation that the earth's surface can be considered flat over relatively short distances uh, and we'll talk about the more complicated case of plate motions on a sphere in the final lecture about um, this topic. We have three goals for this lecture. First, to describe the motions of plates using vectors. So that's our general framework for how we're going to describe plate motions. Then I will help you learn how to calculate plate motions for cases where you have plate boundary types that are not known. Um, and so we'll go through an example of how to do that. And then we'll also talk about the case of calculating relative motions of three plates. Here's our simple um, approximation of a flat earth with two plates. So over here on the left side we have plate A and plate B that are separated by a spreading ridge that's spreading at a rate of 2 on either side of the spreading ridge. And so here we have um, then on the right side velocity vectors VBA and VAB. There are different ways we can describe the relative rate of movement of plate B with respect to plate A. Now these velocity vectors um, aren't simply arrows, they are vectors, meaning that they have both a magnitude, or length, and a direction. And so their magnitude and orientation are quite important. So in this case, if we look at the vector VAB, we can see that it has a magnitude of 4. That's the length of the vector, and it's oriented at 270 degrees on a compass. So uh, pointing straight to the left on the slide as we're looking at it or west on this compass. Now the velocity of the plates relative to one another can be described as we saw in two different ways. So the velocity of plate A with respect to an observer standing on plate B would be called VAB. And so you could imagine yourself standing here on plate B and you would see plate A moving away from you with a velocity of 4 or moving to the left uh, with a velocity of 4. Now the important thing about this is that because we have these two different perspectives, they're equal and opposite to one another. So VAB is equal to minus VBA, or if we add the two together, their sum comes to zero. So VAB plus VBA equals zero. And that'll be a theme that we come back to when we start dealing with more plates as well. One thing to note here is that when we're talking about spreading ridges, the velocities that you'll see listed are typically given as a velocity relative to the spreading ridge. So if you look in the upper uh, part of the figure here, you'll see velocities of 2 on either side of the spreading ridge in the middle, which of course means that the relative velocity to an observer on either one of the plates would be 2 times the velocity of the spreading. Beneath our spreading ridge we have now a depiction of two more plates, again plate A and plate B. In this case, uh, plate B is being subducted beneath plate A with a velocity of 10. Now, in contrast to what we saw with the case for a spreading ridge, in this case, we simply have relative velocities that are equal to whatever the magnitude is that's listed here. So VBA and VAB have opposite orientations, but will have a magnitude of 10 as shown in the figure here. And lastly, the case for a transform boundary is shown here on the bottom. In this case, we have velocities of 6 uh, shown next to either one of the arrows. And it's important to note here that does not mean that we have a total velocity of 12, but rather it's like the case for subduction where we have a velocity of 6 on either side of the transform fault. Let's move now to a slightly more interesting case where we have one plate boundary that is known and three plate boundaries that are unknown. So in this case, we're looking at a picture of plate A that now completely surrounds plate B, and along the left side of plate B we can see a spreading ridge. We also know the velocity of this spreading is again a magnitude of 4 when we look at the velocity of A with respect to an observer standing on plate B. We can deduce a little bit about this picture simply from knowing one of the plate boundaries, and that is that if we know the spreading is perpendicular to the boundary or orthogonal to the boundary and has a non-zero rate, then we can say something about the other three 
boundaries. And so what I'm going to do is pause the video here, or give you an opportunity, rather, to pause the video. And I'd like you to think about what kind of boundary, what kind of plate boundary must we have on the top and bottom of plate B, as well as on the right side of plate B. So go ahead and pause the video and unpause it when you think you've got an answer. Well, let's see how you've done. We know a couple things here. We have our spreading ridge along the left side, and if it's spreading relative to plate A, then we would expect to see plate B moving off to the right, which means we're going to have transform boundaries along the top and bottom if we have perpendicular motion of the spreading ridge along the left side of plate B. We also know that if we're pushing this plate over, we should have some kind of subduction boundary over here on the right. So we can clearly determine a little bit about this picture just from knowing one of the plate boundaries. Are there any potential complication you can see in this situation? Is there anything that we might not know? It may take you a second to think about it. You're welcome to pause the video if you like, but I'll continue. And I'll say that, well, one thing we don't know is the orientation of the subduction zone. We don't know whether plate A is being pushed beneath plate B in this case, or plate B is being subducted beneath plate A. And with the information that we have, there's simply no way we could know that. But as we expected, we have transform boundaries on the top and bottom, and we know that we've got a subduction boundary somewhere on the right side of plate B. When we have three plates, the situation gets a little bit more complicated, but it's not so bad. What we can see here in this picture is three plates, plate A, plate B, and plate C, and we know the relative velocities of plate A with respect to uh, plate B, and the velocity of plate A with respect to plate C. So we know we've got a spreading ridge here with a velocity of 2, a subduction zone here with a velocity of 6, and the question is what is the velocity of plate B with respect to plate C? So this is a question for you, and you're again welcome to pause the video to think about this for a moment. Uh, if you were standing on plate C, what kind of velocity would you calculate for plate B? And so go ahead and pause the video and come back when you think you've got an answer. All right, again, let's see how we've done. We know a few things, as we saw before. We've got a spreading rate of 4, or the relative velocity of 4 between plates A and B and six between plates B and C. So within here, we can do a little bit of simple math and put together the picture. Turns out it's actually quite simple. All we have to do is add up the velocity vectors. We had VAC, which is this velocity of plate A with respect to an observer standing on plate C, to the velocity of plate B with respect to an observer standing on plate A. Simple vector addition, take the vectors and put them tip to tail, add them together, and you find the relative velocity, in this case, of plate B with respect to an observer standing on plate C is 10 whatever units that is. So, pretty intuitive in this case. Let's look at a slightly more complicated scenario. In this case, now we have three plates involved, and again, we have an unknown plate boundary type. The question for you is, in this picture, where here, between A and B, we have again a spreading center. Now we've got a strike slip margin between plates A and C, and then again an unknown between plates B and C. How can we calculate the magnitude of V, B, C in this situation? It turns out it's actually not really any diff different than what we did before. We can simply do the vector addition where we say VBC is equal to VAC plus VBA. So again, we'll take our vector VAC, which is here, and we can add to that VBA, and that will give us VBC. Now, it's a little bit easier to do this if you take either some graph paper or um, a ruler out and draw the picture out, measure out the lengths of the vectors and their orientations, and then you can easily add them together and quickly come up with a magnitude of 5 for the vector VBC, and in this case, its orientation would be something like 60 degrees from vertical. Now, again, that's operating on the assumption that we have spreading perpendicular and only pure uh, transform motion on the transform faults. So, 
That's it for our discussion about plate motions on the flat earth and now it's your chance to see how much you've taken in and go ahead and finish up the lecture with a short quiz.